legitimately felt guilty playing Marvel's Spider-Man again on the PC and on the Steam Deck in a variety of configurations. I love this freaking game. There's no secret about it. I've talked about this game incessantly since it first launched in 2018 on the original PlayStation 4. I played it through on that platform. I played it again on the PS4 Pro, and then I played it again on the PlayStation 5 when it was remastered. And here it is again, the remastered edition, which includes all of the incredible DLC for this game. For the PC, I predicted that Sony was going to do this. They're publishing a lot more stuff for the PC platform. And I thought, okay, well, Spider-Man is a crown jewel. If that comes to the PC, things are going to really start changing for Sony and PlayStation as a company. And they're going to be reaching a lot more people. And I've always felt this about this particular game. I've always felt that this was a title that Sony shouldn't hold back. They should release it to as many Spider-Man fans as possible out there because it was such an incredible achievement from Insomniac. They are the perfect developer to handle a Spider-Man title. Now, if you have never seen this game, if you know nothing about it, you can kind of equate it to basically a year's worth of awesome Spider-Man comic book stories all wrapped up into a video game. You're going to be in the life of Peter Parker. You're going to have some moments where you're playing as Peter Parker and you're going to miss the web slinging mechanic because he's out of costume. And then, of course, you're going to be racing around New York City, stopping crime in a variety of different ways. And then you're also going to be taking on some of Spider-Man's greatest arch enemies and foes like the Shocker and Doc Ock and Scorpion and Vulture. All kinds of awesome characters are in this game. And then there's sequences where you're going to be dealing with Felicia Hardy and Silver Sable and Hammerhead. So the content is rich and uh, rife with all kinds of surprise and beautiful storytelling. There are also some sequences in the game where you're going to be in kind of a stealth mode. And then, of course, you also get glimpses of characters and elements that become huge parts of the Spider-Man video game mythology going forward. So without spoiling too much, this is just an unbelievably crafted game, which really understood the assignment, really got the sense of place and of the majesty of New York City, the details that you'll see on buildings and inside of buildings and in underground lairs and swinging through tunnels and under bridges and finding all of the secrets and taking photos photographs of all the landmarks that you have to do, finding all of your backpacks everywhere, going and uncovering all of the mysteries that Felicia Hardy has left behind across the city. It, it just, it continues to give and give and give. You basically take over territories of New York City. So you take over the financial district or Midtown or something like that, and you've got a bunch of different crimes that you have to solve. You've also got bases that are filled with uh, Wilson Fisk enemies and then some of these demon characters, these masked hoodlums that are fighting in the streets of New York City, and that is starting to escalate into this crazy gang war, and the police are involved, so you're taking down bases filled with criminals, or you might be taking down some petty crimes, some muggings, some uh, jewelry store ripoffs, some stolen vehicles that you might have to pursue and then you take out the bad guys out of there but there's all manner of nuance in this there you all the way along you're hearing J. Jonah Jameson's podcast which is just berating Spider-Man which is so expertly done I no pun intended I've just marveled at the quality and the love man the heart that comes out of playing this game and it's embodied by missions where sometimes you got to go and talk to garbage people and try to track down something that has been tossed in the trash or you may have to go and circle back on some piping that's in a building that's the water pressure is all affected and you might have to kind of solve the mystery of why people aren't having the showers that they want it's like you really care for this character who really cares for his city and my god it's just a beautiful beautiful recreation of all of these different eras and all of this amazing lore that has been crafted around spider-man as a comic book character i adore this game i absolutely do what's it like to play on PC? Well, it's freaking wonderful. I've got the privilege of being able to have an ultra-wide display. So I played this in a 21-9 aspect ratio, having Manhattan wrap around me, and it was unbelievable. It was just so cinematic and so gorgeous. And that seamless transition from the cut sequences, these truly animated movie-worthy moments where we're getting to know these characters to action and to gameplay on a 21-9 display, 
is just stunning. It's just absolutely stunning. So I played it there, and then I also plugged in the same PC, which is a 3070 card on it, and plugged it into my television set, my OLED TV, so it's all 16 by 9. But all of the ray tracing was kicked up to maximum. I played around with the resolution to kind of get the best frame rates, and that's the thing with the PC version, is you can tinker and you can tweak, and depending on the graphics card that you have, you can kind of make it fit best to the parameters that will work for you. I always err on the side of frame rate with Spider-Man. I just feel like when you get to 60 or above frames per second, it's just a much better experience. It's so glorious when Spider-Man is just whipping through these urban canyons in New York City and the web thwipping back and forth across the landscape is just incredible. It's just so breathtaking, man. I just love it. So it was phenomenal playing on my pretty souped up PC with the 3070 card in there. It's got a, uh, I think, last gen Intel processor and it's got more than enough horsepower to really kind of push this out and close to its state-of-the-art beauty state. Now, I don't have a 3090 card. I don't have the, the state-of-the-art in terms of hardware to kind of push this thing to the max, but what I saw was spectacular pun intended. And it was great on the OLED screen in 69, and it was great on the 21.9 screen, but this is truly a killer app for the Steam Deck. To play this game in handheld mode and to not lose that frame rate, because obviously Insomniac put a lot of attention, a lot of care on making this a verified game for the Steam Deck. So this thing just hums, man. It's just perfect on the Steam Deck. You whip through and you're playing the game and that the transposing of the experience to the smaller screen in handheld mode is just stunning. You cannot believe your eyes that you're able to get into all of these combat situations and all of this incredible kinetic movement that the Spider-Man games deliver and it's in the palm of your hand. I mean, more than once I was just like, what the how is this achievable? How am I doing this? Because in 2018 I was saying that when I was playing it on the PlayStation 4 on my big screen TV and then again on, you know, when the resolution was bumped up for PS4 Pro and PS5, it's just like, wow, how is this even achievable? How am I zipping through girders as I'm swinging around? And, and that animation is just so flawless and seamless. And here it is in handheld form on the Steam Deck. And all of the cut sequences play beautifully. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But the coolest thing is that I played the Steam Deck in dock mode on the same TV that I had my bigger budget t PC plugged into. And I really didn't lose that much. I really didn't lose that core experience. Yes, you, you jettison the ray tracing and you can't have everything cranked up to maximum, but my Steam Deck outputting to an OLED TV was still a phenomenal experience. I plugged in my DualSense and got all the beautiful articulated force feedback with the DualSense controller. It really feels like you're pulling on the triggers to get the most kind of oomph out of each swing that you do. And there's a whole set of control complexities in there to kind of get the most out of every downward swing and the and the physics just feel correct. You can actually put yourself into kind of free fall mode to get more speed and then you launch yourself up with the web and it, God, it just feels incredible. And I've said this time and again, Spider-Man I think is the best video game character that's ever been invented. He is just so much fun to play and you get so accustomed to jumping up in the air and whipping between buildings and launching yourself and you know landing on a building and then propelling yourself off and it really sticks with you <laughs> I keep having these spider puns I'm sorry but it really sticks with you and so you the minute you move to any other movement in any other video game you instantly want to web swing everywhere and I found that even as I became Peter Parker and I'm like navigating through the, like the the feast stage and talking to Aunt May, it's like, well, I want to get up there, but I just want to web zip up the, and you can't, right? You're Peter Parker. Uh, and it's, <laughs> it's just amazing how second nature movement in Marvel Spider-Man is and how wonderfully executed it is in this video game. It's just so freeing and fun. It's fun to play all of the story bits. Yeah, there's some, you know, 
variety that you might like some missions more than others. You're going to see some repetition in some of the city combat sequences where you're taking on the same types of car chases and the same types of goons, but it's never not fun. The amount of flexibility in the combat system where you're throwing characters or you're throwing stuff at bad guys or you're shooting web fluid at them and they're sticking to walls or cars or you're ripping a door off of a car and bashing a bunch of bad guys with it. And then you've got all these other spider gadgets and abilities that come into play. My favorite is the web bloom where you jump up and you spin around and you shoot webbing in a bunch of different ways and it takes out the field half the time and then some of the characters might run away from you. I love that but there's you know spider drones and spider bombs and impact spider webs and electric webs. There's all kinds of great goodies for you to tinker with and play around with and also mix and match in real time and all of it just plays perfectly on the Steam Deck. I couldn't believe I was sitting in a movie theater playing Spider-Man on the thing. It just looked incredible and truly that's what this underlined. I have played this game so many times and I love it more every time I play it. I, I cannot believe it. And of course I love the Batman Arkham games. That's one of my favorite trilogies of all time, if not my favorite trilogy. I love great superhero video game experiences, but I don't know, this game just grows in my estimation. Yes, it borrows from the previous designs of lots of Spider-Man games from the past, because there's been so many good ones, but this is just exquisite. And man, it's great to play again. And man, I am so happy that Sony published this on PC. And I cannot believe that Valve gifted us with a Steam Deck to be able to play this in handheld mode and at this fidelity and th with this level of performance. I'm so freaking happy and I'm so excited for anybody that has had a PC, has chosen the PC path, never picked up a PlayStation, and now this is going to be your first experience with Marvel Spider-Man. It's an utter classic. It's absolutely wonderful. And I did have one thought about the PlayStation 5 playing, uh, you know, off of the PC. I, you know, I did get it to look fantastic, but I also have this game on the PlayStation 5, and the PC that I have is worth considerably more than my PlayStation 5, and the PS5 version still looks great. So as amazing as this game is on whatever variety of PC you might be able to play it on, including the Steam Deck, it still also really does serve as a great kind of message about how easy it is to enjoy this game at a really high fidelity on the PlayStation 5. And that's a pretty reasonably priced, super powerful console if you can find one and if you have it. So PS5 players should also be happy that they've got that going for them too. If you've already got a PS5 and you've got this game, you know how incredible it is. And I've given this game like a 9.5 in the past, but I think upon further reflection and revisiting this game and how important it is to the PC and how important it is to video games in general that more people will play this exceptional character-based Spider-Man experience, I think this is a 10 out of 10, you know, especially on the heels of the incredible MCU Spider-Man movies that more people can jump into this game and just be blown away by it. I'm so freaking happy by that. So Marvel's Spider-Man on the PC, I'm giving you a 10 out of 10.